oh my god it's like unmasking unmasking uh <laughs> batman <laughs> yeah yeah what is what does troy miller look like without the without the hat and the glasses no one knows for Nobody's sure gonna know who i am they're gonna be like who is that guy who is that guy exactly like oh exactly. wait it's troy oh i see exactly i am batman oh no all right well cool uh welcome folks that are tuning in to watch this video um, this recording of photo critique number 185, Go With The Flow. Again, this is a crowdsourced topic. The TWIP community came up with a list of topics, and this is one of them. I forget who th whose this was, so if you... Uh, yeah. Do you remember, Troy? I forgot who mm -hmm. this was. No, I don't remember, but I, I, I thought, you know, we should make sure that they actually entered <laughs> yes. in this one. Yes. <laughs> I can look it up. I, it's in the community. It's in the it's in the comments on one of those those previous critiques. But you right. know who you are, who, who who submitted this go with the flow uh, topic. So comment and let us know, you know, comment on the post or wherever. Let us know if it's yours or not. But some good submissions, kind of the submissions that I expected that we would get this time around. Lots of water, right? Flowing water and some unexpected yeah. ones, too. So, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, you know, it's a tough topic to interpret uniquely, right? I mean, mm -hmm. like, you know, water and, and just sort of the whole flow concept, like, you know, the long exposure thing that, that seems to be kind of the easy go to. And we probably all have those images. So, uh, yeah, it's it's good. Yeah. Yeah. It was a good stretch topic. Good stretch topic for sure. Good. I'm excited. So what what's next on the critique list? So this one is go with the flow. And then after this, what is next week? Uh, are you not going to go back? Or did you go back? Where are you at? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh, oh, there they are. They're at the bottom. There it is. Okay. Yeah, at the bottom. Yeah, so we are we are on 28th now. Uh, March 28th. Uh, what is the next one? This one. The Path Not Taken, right? Yeah, the path yeah. not taken is next. So good. Ooh, ooh. That should be interesting. The path not taken. Hmm. That's going to be tough. I, I can't even think of an idea right away. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. Well, it's kind of almost the opposite. It's the opposite of go with the flow. Right? So It is a, it is a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah, it's gonna be the it's gonna be the rocky path up the mountain that you looked at and went, yeah, I'm going back to the car. Mm, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, or more there. literal, a fork in the road, you know, with a sign or someone walking, or yeah, it's a lot. Yes, yeah, possibilities, possibilities. Right. This side, there's a squirrel blocking your path, and this side, it's wide open. So you're gonna go wide open because those the squirrels are dangerous. No, for sure, for sure. <laughs> All right, let's dive in. You ready to do this? I am. All right, here we go. Let me share the screen. We're in go with the flow. All right, first up is Raphael. He says, I resisted the temptation to screen cap a progressive commercial. This is a bit cliche, but shot in a less common way, 320 millimeters on the Nikon D850. Let's take a look. Oh, wait, let me go back. What did he say? Uh, eight tenth of a second. Edit in Lightroom Photoshop. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Th this is when I when I when the word flow showed up in the title. This is kind of the the shot I had in my head that we were gonna see like flowing water like this or a river, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's great. No, these these are great. These are these are really fun images. They're not as easy to take as everybody thinks. You know, if you have never been out and shot these, it takes a little bit more effort than, you know, just a filter. You know, you've got to get mm -hmm. good composition. You got to be locked down. Um, but I really do like this one. I think this is really, really nice. Um, you know, unfortunately, my brain, I immediately go to black and white. I'm like, I, I realize there's that green band in there. And I really like that a lot. But I think that, you know, for me, these images are just so classically done in black and white because it's about the shape and the form. Mm -hmm. um, but it's wonderful in color. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying I dislike it. I'm just saying, you know, play with it. Maybe um, even infrared on this one, right? Because that green mm -hmm. would the green and whatever foliage is on these little these the rock formations back there would pop out, right? When those in, in infrared, wouldn't those kind of turn whitish or gray, light gray? Um, 
in infrared, what would happen would be is if there's enough infrared entering this area is the grass would would glow. Yes, absolutely. Which would compete with the water. It would all blend together and you wouldn't oh, get a lot of vibration. Right. So yeah. Yeah. this is a situation where infrared might not be that great if you keep that grass. However, if you're going to photograph just the water, you're going to get a lot more contrast and you're going to get a lot more crunch in there. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, infrared would be would be fun there. Um, yeah. But, yeah. you know, kudos to Raphael for the, the composition, uh, shooting with a long lens, that compression element's really nice with that soft foreground. Um, and then our subject in the background, I really, I really like that a lot. I think, I think it's a really great image. Yeah. 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 I agree. Uh, when I, the first thing I look at when I see this and we, you know, we've all, I, well, not all of us, but a lot of us have done long exposures like this of waterfalls and moving water. The last one I did was, um, <clears throat> was in San Francisco. I think it was at Yerba Buena Park, uh, right across from the Mus Moscone Convention Center. They've got this kind of water installation there that uh, that I went and did some shots of and, you know, played around with long exposure. But when I look at these, I think, like, when I look at this one in particular, I feel constrained. So, Rafael, I feel like I want to see, I want to see the, um, like, the top area of the water up here. Like, I feel like I want to see where is this water coming from? Where is it originating to the best that I can see? So I feel like that's cut off a little bit. Maybe if it was just zoomed out a little bit, you know, just to give me more context. Or maybe there's a reason that he cropped at the top up here because maybe there's like telephone poles or something ugly up there that you don't want to see. But barring that, I'd want to see like the mystery is where where is this water coming from up here? And then down here a little bit too. Where is it coming from and where is it going? So the whole story of the in my opinion of the flowing water is its trajectory. It's look at, look at where it started and it's flowing down. It's bouncing off all these rocks and coming through here. And now it's going off camera left over here, you know? So, right. I don't know. It just feels like if you, if you had zoomed out a little bit, if this was a zoom lens or, or, or just got a, got a wider crop of this shot, um, it would have, for me, it would have been a little bit more effective because I could see where things are going. And like, this is great too. You know, you can like, even, even if you punched in on this shot too, like if you look at the shot and instead of it showing all this detail, aside from the color, color, you know, being black and white or whatever, Troy, but if you punched in like on a particular area and focused on that as being, Hey, this is the, this is the shot that could have been interesting. I don't know. What, what do you think? No, I, all, all those points are very valid. Um, the more that I look at it, the more that I think that that what I'm struggling with is is the crop. Um, mm -hmm. I I think that the foreground element, as much as I sort of like the concept of the water flowing through, I you know as I'm holding my hand up, I really want to crop it just below the grass, just barely below the grass and above the water, so we get a little bit of that rock. It creates a really nice foundation for the image, and then everything you said about, I want to see a little bit more top of that waterfall, but if I can't, then at least cropping it's going to keep me right in the center where the water is. And I think mm -hmm. that's, that's sort of the magical point. And I, yeah. and I might even come in on the side a little bit, you know, I mean, really lean into those waterfalls. Yeah. 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 Like a vertical crop, like maybe blending what you and I are saying and, and make it a, a black and white vertical crop with a little bit more space around. So you can see the trajectory of the water and all that. But cool. right, right. Cool shot. Thanks, Raphael. And up next is Mr. Stephen Scharf. Linda Falls in Angwin, California. I ain't never been there. Yes. That's pretty. Again, yeah, now this feels like infrared. This feels like this could be an infrared <laughs> shot, right? Because now you, if this was infrared, these the foliage would pop out, like you said, provided there's enough infrared radiation falling on the foliage. Um, right. But the, but they would pop out and complement the whites in the water, right? So it'd be a completely different shot in infrared. What do you think? Yeah, it definitely could be. No, it definitely could be. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, ultraviolet light in this shot. The blue. You know, that's that's because it's in shade and, you know, we never really know what infrared is going to do till we point our cameras at it. The one thing I can tell you is that in infrared, those highlight spots in the back are going to go massively overexposed mm -hmm. because not only are they sunlight, but they are infrared and the camera is sensitive to that. So 
I love to shoot in this environment, but I always try to get rid of those, any kind of sunspots or anything because infrared will just overexpose those. And it's yeah. very, very difficult to keep those in. Um, Interesting. Okay. Just speaking to this image, I, I really love the composition. Um, I love the fact that Stephen, that you, that you didn't really lean into waterfall only that, you know, it's, it's more about the environment and the rocks and the log and, oh, there's a waterfall in there. It's a nice element. And, you know, it's a really, it's a really wonderful uh, perspective. And so I really enjoy that. For me, I think one of the things that I would do is I would probably pull out or reduce that blue color that, you know, the color contamination. I know some people like that. I'm, I know that for me, I don't prefer to see the blue light in the shaded areas. Um, I don't see that with my eyes when I'm there. And so I like to pull it out or pull it down, especially out of the shadows. So something, something to play with. But other than that, I mean, I just, I love the composition. It's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. I don't know. I'm on the fence about this log right here. Like that's, that's kind of coming in to the scene there. Mm -hmm. Like what, what do you think about that? Like, cause on the one hand it, it's adding some kinetic energy to the shot and breaking up what would just be a traditional long exposure of a waterfall. But on the other hand, it's obscuring the waterfall right here. And part of me is interested in seeing, seeing this thing right here because it's, it's different and it adds, adds some, some energy with it leaning on this rock here. Like, is it going to fall? Is it not going to like, what's going on? Um, but then the other part of me wants to just see the waterfall as much of that beautiful flowing water as I can. I don't know. What, what do you think? I, I like it the way it is. I really do. Mm -hmm. I think that that it this is more of a shot of the scene and less a shot of the waterfall. And that's yeah. kind of what I was yeah. saying initially is I, I appreciate the fact that, you know, it's not a it's not a traditional lean into the waterfall only type of shot. It's more of, you know, the environment around me. Um, and really, uh, it, it's it, because the ground or the the cliff or the moss on the other side of the waterfall itself isn't isn't sharp right it's sharp as well it really makes me feel like this is just a landscape and there's a waterfall flowing through it mm -hmm. and the log to me is a really cool element i think it's i think mm -hmm. it's the subject it's the hero you know okay. um and the fact that it's it's put in front of the waterfall itself helps it to stand out and so to me, you know, you got this nice triangle, you've got this nice leading line to that point, you've got the waterfall behind it, which I think just sort of, sort of leads to everything. And then the water flows out to the lower right. So it leads your eye. So all the things I, I think yeah. that it does, it does what, what I, I mean, my brain likes it. You know, yeah. I don't know that I would have taken that when I was there, if I would have seen it or what I would have, <laughs> you know, what I would have like jumped <laughs> into the traditional, but you know, that's what, that's how we, that's how we experience the space. All, and I like it. It's all subjective, right? It's all subjective. Cool shot though, Steven. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, sir. All right. Nora's Anotinous is up next. Water flow mm -hmm. trails. Wow. Look at that. I know these are, these are so great. Grief. That's really cool. Uh, yeah. I love the abstract nature of these. I mean, I, I've, I've photographed, I'm sure a lot of us have, but I've just photographed so many of these. Um, and I'm always struggling finding a purpose in the shot or a, sort of a relatable you know, imagery in the shot as opposed to just pure abstract. And this one really kind of does that where I feel like there's this major river across the bottom and you've got all these little fingers leading into it, right? Mm -hmm. And... I think that's really nice. That's a really nice story. This could be shot from, you know, high altitude looking down on some desert plain, or it could just simply be right there on the beach or on a riverbed or something. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah so I really, I really do love it. Yeah. No, yeah. It's really cool. It looks like um, this, this reminds me of this shot that I actually saw on Apple TV on one of the uh, you know how the screensaver pops up on apple tv uh -huh. and it gives yep. you minus is, mine is set to i think it's set to showing drone shots and one of the drone shots that i just love that popped up that pops up all the time is an aerial shot of the uh icelandic highlands kind of like it's like it's so weird i had to find a, a, a photo i'll post it in the community but it is so beautiful because it's like these it looks kind of like this shot only think hues of white snow, you know, for these little tendrils that Nora has in here and then darker, almost black tones below it. 
and they're just like interlacing over each other. It almost looks synthetic, but it's aerial. It's an aerial shot of a tundra out there. It's really crazy. This reminds me of that a lot. This also reminds me of those those kits we used to get from uh, when remember KB Toy and Hobby when KB Toy and Hobby was around. You get these sand kits where you would do, I forget how they worked, but you would basically make these kinds of patterns out of sand, you know, kind of dropping things into the sand and it would make this kind of pattern and then you'd have have art at the end of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hold up quote fingers, art. Uh, but no, this, this looks really cool. I, I like the color treatment. The first feel that I get from this, Nora, is, uh, I forget that uh, someone's going to correct me, but the, the Japanese painter that does those kind of wave kind of looks... You know, you know what I'm talking about. You've seen those. We've seen them yeah, a million we, times. We should remember the name because we've referred to it a couple times. All the now. time. And then Steven <laughs> or somebody always corrects us. But Steven, as long as you correct us, we're never going to learn because we're just going to rely on right, you. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> to correct yeah. us all the time. But uh, no, I like this. So what do you, so looking at this shot, you know, so some of the previous shots, and we talk about borders and key lines a lot. This one does not have a border or a key line on it. And I think it's great i think it's effective just like this yeah like like do you as a as a key line and border aficionado do you feel like it's unfinished well yeah but <laughs> <laughs> look like to, to be fair right to be fair uh we made it 21 minutes uh and <laughs> you timing it borders, so <laughs> photographers without borders here I have an image I put in here. I didn't put a border on it either. And um, I think it, I think it, I think all images for the most part in this type of scenario would benefit from some, some form of presentation, but yeah. um, you know, that's, that's up to you, you know, whether you want to do it or not. Um, yeah. I do want to, I do want to point out, I don't know if you see it on your side, Frederick, but at the, at the very, very bottom center, it looks like there's been some clone work done in there and it looks like to me like i can see some repeating tracks yeah like right right They're in that here? area right there yeah yeah i didn't notice yeah. that i did not know yeah that. so i i mean i don't know if it's if it's maybe just a a pattern in nature that looks like that if it is i would probably clean that up just so it doesn't look like that but mm -hmm. um if you did clone something out of there then i noticed it so either way i always even even when it's patterns in nature that make me feel like they were cloned, I still fix them. Mm, um, interesting. Yeah, I don't think it's I don't think most most people would probably never see them. I I see them unfortunately, so I'm always making sure that you know everything feels organic. Yeah. So yeah, that's that that's that image comp coming in part of your brain, right? <sighs> it is. It is. It's a curse. I see it everywhere. <laughs> I see it in nature. <laughs> <laughs> seriously though but like if you go to if you go to mount st helens <clears throat> on one of the on one of the mountains that all the trees were blasted off of uh they replanted pine trees and the type of pine tree that they planted has very sharp and uh, very sharp angles and it literally looks like somebody clone stamped the same tree a million times over this mountain <laughs> and it I can't look at the mountain. I can't. It's just, I can't photograph it. I don't want to see it. It just looks so fake. <laughs> you see, you're, that's Photoshop. That is Photoshop polluting your brain. <laughs> it is. It's like, it nature's is. like, I was here first, dude. Sorry. <laughs> I've so seen, Steven, I've seen... Steven says, uh, let me bring his comment on the screen here. Yeah, there it is. Steven, oh, let me turn you off. Uh, yeah. Hokusai. Hokusai. Hokusai, yeah. Is that that's that type. And Nora Nora says uh it's all natural. Look at oh, that. Okay. So no okay, no cloning good. in there. Very good. Oh, I mean I've I've shot I've shot images, landscapes, you know, you know I like to chase the moon and I'll have clouds, like high altitude clouds, and they have this repeating wavy pattern to them. And I have to go in and I have to break the pattern because it looks too mechanical right yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah. i i tell you all that so that you kind of know how my brain's working and it's not you <laughs> it's just how i see things but i just want to point it out <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah repeating patterns i mean if you're programmed to think oh repeating patterns are subjective um when you see repeating patterns in nature like don't go to the you know africa and look at sand dunes or something in the sahara <laughs> you're gonna be like that's not real <laughs> you gotta mess that up a little bit it's too it's too synthetic yeah looking. yeah 
Yeah, and that's why when I build things in my house, I don't build anything with straight lines. Everything has free form sine wave s curves, everything, so that my brain, so that I can't look at something and see it off, uh, you know, a sixteenth of an inch down the line. You know, everything has to flow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. All right. All right, Nora. Thank you once again. Hitting it out of the park. Very beautiful. This is. Yeah. I'm sure this is part of a series, Nora. I want to see more of this. All right. Yeah. Phil's up. Phil says, going with the flow. Oh, that's what the sea palms do. Yeah. They have no choice, do they? No, they don't. No. Um, beautiful image, Phil. Uh, I just, I really love, I really love your series of these sea palms. Um, this particular image, you know, looking at it, trying to think about, you know, constructive criticism, ways that, that I think it could be improved. Um, a couple things is I wish that the the rock in the lower left was all in frame and surrounded by a little bit of water. Um, I feel like it's, you know, when it's touching that frame on the edge that we it could use a little bit of space, give it more of a sense of an island. But but moreover, and Frederick, I'm really curious what your thoughts are, is I feel like the white of the of the water is too gray. Mm. It's it's the contrast is put is pushed down too much to try to hold detail. And I think it needs to be brought up. Um, you know, I it's white. No, and... I'd have to see that. I have to see it. I, I like it like this, to be honest with you. I like the, the muted, almost cottony feel of the water in there. You might lose some of that if you increase because you're talking about increasing the contrast, basically. Right. If you bring the white. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm talking about bringing up the, the mid and highlight tones and leaving the shadows where they are. I just feel like some of the areas of the water are too gray. Like there's there's certainly highlights and shadows within the water itself. And I feel like they're too flat. So um, I like the shadows where they are, but I want to see the midtones and the highlights brought out. So the spe there's more specular happening in the water on the highlights end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's subjective. Yeah, it's great either way. But I, I see exactly what you mean. But I like it like this. I tend to like it. Okay. I want to see, you know, I think like a shot like this, like what would the... Um, like, what would it be? What would the presentation be if you were to print this? Like, print it like this, and then print it with the changes that you're sub you're you're suggesting. Because maybe it's a it's a transmitted light versus reflected light kind of deal. Where if you print this, maybe those tones look even more muted, right? And you're and then you'd be thinking, yeah, okay, of course we want to we want to make those pop out a little bit more on a print, but on a transmissive display or a display like this where we're where light is shining at us from the thing um it looks it looks okay to me it almost it, it goes back to that hakusai again it kind of has that feel for me i don't know right let us know what right. you guys um, think in the chat <clears throat> yeah my own my only other thought phil i mean is that uh it doesn't look sharp it doesn't look like you have a point of I focus agree. i agree that, with that. that's yeah. that's tack and i think that um, in images like this, I think you kind of got to do one of two things. You got to really, really lean into the completely out of focus, super, super soft, let everything go that way. Um, but I think there needs to be an element in here. And I'm getting nitpicky because I know you shoot a lot of these. So I'm just getting picky is I think you need something to really anchor you, uh, you know, with with focus or something. So getting it nice and tack sharp, I think would help a lot like on the rock. But I think also if you can get the timing just so that even one of those, we'll call them those little mini palms, right? Those sea palms. If just one of them is not moving too much or is is more sharp like the hero, right? And it's all turbulent around them. That I think would, would elevate an image like this. Yeah. Yeah. And Stephen, Stephen says, we were talking about the bring up the contrast or the whites or whatever. And Stephen says, no, it's the luminance of it. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I mean, they're. The, the luminance is one part of it, but that's not really what I'm what I would be going for. There there are specular highlights in this image on the rocks, um, from the spray of the water. It's another layer of light where a specular highlight doesn't necessarily have to have detail either. If it's a pure specular highlight, and I think if 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 you can get the luminance and the specular highlights and the shadows to create this really wide range, you'll create a lot more excitement and depth in an image like this. Um, and it just takes, it just takes a lot of tweaking, you know, it's, it takes a lot of work. Cool shot, Phil. 
Thank you. Thank Very you. cool. Still one of my Phil's, favorites. Phil is going to be single-handedly responsible for, you know, legions of photographers heading to the California coast over there to get these, <laughs> to get these shots up in Mendocino. All right. Coming up next is Michael Rhino. Michael Rhino says, my entry for Go With The Flow. Okay. Here we are. Yeah, very cool shot. I think this is in the in the Narrows in Zion is what it looks like. Could be somewhere else, but um, this is this is interesting because I I feel like I have I have two images that are competing for my attention. Right, you've got the ladder on the right, <clears throat> and then you've got the waterfall on the left, and neither one of them are dominant in the frame. So I'm struggling a little bit with. You know what's my favorite part of it um i feel like it's kind of split right down the middle you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. trying to yeah yeah to get... uh, what you're, you're what you're saying is well there's there's for me there's three things going on here um there's that water flow uh let me put the camera on me here there's the uh the water flow on the left side over here and then there's this structure right here. And then there's this abyss in the middle here that I feel like I want. Right. I feel like that's waiting for something like a, a person or some other feature in there that's framed by these two left. Because you got a frame. You've got the water at the bottom. You've got the structure on this side of the frame, the water flowing on this side. And then kind of some interesting looking warm light backlight coming through on the top framing this middle area. But then there's nothing in the middle area for me to look at. So I feel like he's waiting, like like a bride or a mountain lion or somebody needs to be <laughs> <laughs> needs to be in that. Uh, maybe just some eyes, some eerie eyes peeking out of there or something. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, what do you think? I mean, am I on it with the frame, the framing? I I think so. No, I think I think that's really where I'm struggling with this. Was is you know what you know because my my first thought is just like you know I really like the image. I love the fact that you know you've got these two elements and it's fun. Like there's a ladder that's leading me up and there's this brighter spot at the top where I want to go. Mm -hmm. However, we do have this massive dark void dead center, which I just, it's a trap. I don't think that it, yeah. it, it adds itself to the image. I think that it sort of holds your attention. You keep wanting to see something in there. And so, you know, with that, I think that this is a, this is one of those kind of images where you, you need to see it before you take the photo mm -hmm. so that you mm -hmm. can step to the side uh, maybe shoot wider so the ladder comes across that dark area, shoot into the waterfall, you know, thing, things like that. Nothing yep. we could do with it here. Hey, you could take it into take it into Photoshop and put a single red balloon in there. <laughs> make it make it an homage to Pennywise the Clown, right? And just put a single red balloon in there or something, something like that. I mean, I kid, but you, you the, the photo as it stands right now is great you could do some additional things to it, right? You could take it into Photoshop right. and, and you know, make it a composite and use that void to your own benefit and keep going. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Um, you know, it's a wonderful image, play with it, but I think that, you know, when you have that giant dark hole, it's not really the subject. <laughs> right, <laughs> so. right, and it's, the, it's, it's taking up the most space in the image and it's, right dead center of the image and framed so it's it's fo forcing the viewer's eye into the abyss and then we get trapped in there because there's no payoff in there yeah so. yeah cool all right yeah it's better big look at that oh i know i know i went in and fixed it i was so happy i could go in and make it full width and then it was huge <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome all right, Karen Sweeney's up next. He says, uh, going with the flow, the White Cart River in spate. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, okay. <clears throat> See, this is money. a long exposure, but not a very long exposure, right? This has got to be, what, a couple seconds long, Karen? I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think that's a good a good point to, to focus on a little bit is that, you know, when we do these long exposures, we don't always have to go, like, full silky you know, five minute streams, like sometimes just a little bit of the of the movement is all we need, just mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. so that's, that's, that's really all we need. Um, 
so I mean, right away, you know, this image comes up. I'm like, got my hands up. I'm like propping. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just so you guys know, every image that comes up, I'm always doing this. And, yep. and you know, it's very true. Um, I know Frederick gets to see all of it. Yep. Um, for me, I love, I really do love the feel of this image. Um, but what I'm struggling with is the fact that the building is dead center. And we've mm. got the skyline. I think the sky above the trees is competing with the foreground of the water. So just take the sky out entirely. So then what you have is you have this wonderful building that's isolated against this darker background. And then you'll have this wonderful leading line from the lower left hand corner leading up to the building. And I think you have a, I think you'll have a winner there. Yeah. 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 I agree. It, it, I don't know. Maybe it's it, we, we used to say when we were on Mighty Networks, we used to complain about the Mighty Networks crushing the uh, the blacks or blasting out the whites. The um, this one feels a little bit. I don't know. It, I feel like I want a little bit more pop in it, Karen, like a little bit more contrast, maybe more separation, if possible, between these trees. And I want to feel that excitement. All you know, Troy's comments aside, you know, with the this building being in the center, I agree with that. But the main part of the main subject the supporting character in here i see three elements i see this building which you know arguably be at one of the intersections of the rule of thirds the water here which i'd want to pop a little bit because we're showing motion in it i want to see a little bit more of what is showing me that motion which is the the kind of the wealthy the or the the frothy parts of the water and then the trees are kind of a tertiary supporting character the sky too but the trees are kind of a supporting character here and there's different kinds of trees these these are clearly illuminated differently than this bunch right here and then this bunch mm -hmm. right here i'd want to see a little bit more separation in there to make it a little bit more interesting and then this bunch right here i don't know i'd maybe even get rid of those right i mean maybe the content aware fill those out of there or crop differently so that those aren't in there or or maybe keep them i don't know i'm on the fence because if you keep them in there then it's showing it gives me a better idea of the size of this body of water without them in there then this could be a lake you know or something going off to the side so that's yeah, 50 50. what do you think Trey? am i on base off I, base no I, t I totally agree no i i do like the little island of of brush on the right i think it gives us scale and i think it gives us a container for the water to flow down in um my only addition would be uh to try to bring up the exposure value or the luminance on the building itself a little bit um mm -hmm. just to kind of stand out from the trees oh, yeah even make the more. building pop yeah make the building pop yeah because if everything else Not, is kind of lower contrast then that building pops out and cropped with your idea of cropping it then that building becomes the focus steven the brightest yeah. thing in the image <laughs> so it becomes yeah. it becomes the focus of the image yeah no i i love it i think this is this is one of those kind of images that it, it there's so much that you can work with and it really deserves the attention it's a really wonderful capture yeah yeah really cool yeah the, the the sky here i don't know i'm thinking like do we do you want the sky in there i mean the no, clouds i'd take the clouds, it out the, the, yeah you crop it out or or what yeah just yeah, yeah just crop it out yeah i've i've cropped it in in my viewer so that it's sort of like a square format you're right with no sky yep yep i see it i see yep. it yeah yeah cropped about right here crap it out yep. and then now we don't have this to look at and now we're forced to look down in here we're not going off into the not going off into the distance there yeah right and just by but just by simply cropping at that top of the trees you've you've moved that house or that building into an upper right third that works perfect for the composition you know mm -hmm. it's it's really yeah it's really really it's really tight it, it's a great it's a great subject i hope you go back here a lot and shoot this it's really worth it yeah yeah you're totally right though yeah crop right here changes the whole feel feel of the shot yep very cool all right yep. thank you karen awesome. sweeney there it is bigger yeah <laughs> see see you saw it you saw the crop yeah <laughs> yeah right there yeah no, no. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Closer. Yeah, yeah, right there. The yeah. yeah. She Love gets it. it. Yep. 
All right. Is this last? Yeah, last but not That's least. That's the last one. Mr. Troy Miller. Going with the flow. Crowd yeah, surfing. Is that you, it. Troy? Is that you? No, hell no. <laughs> it's like I didn't know you were tatted up like that. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is this is from a concert that I photographed a long time ago. And one of my one of my favorite images. Um and it just, you know, when we when we talked about the topic last week, this image came to mind right away. It was one of the first images that I thought of, you know, because when when they get into this mode and they're crowd surfing, like you don't know where they're going to take you. Uh, sometimes the people that are crowd surfing aren't respectful and they just get dropped, you know, <laughs> right in the flood. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know what the etiquette is for crowd surfing, but some people clearly don't follow it. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if crowd surfing is over now in the, the era of viral contaminants, you know, people don't want to touch each other anymore. I wonder if this is over. I don't. I don't Back know. in my I, day, I can... we used to crowd surf. Now you folks are yeah. all in your your bubbles. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I have a lot of images from this. This was at a Vans warp Tour out in, um, what was it, on Pomona. And it was on the horse track field, and it was so dusty that... It, 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 it we just couldn't see and you couldn't hardly breathe and how tightly packed everybody was it was just oh it was crazy but the crowd surfing was insane there were so many people doing it and this is just like one of the best shots that i got and this guy's just like loving it and you know he just goes where they take him and then it, when he gets to the other side the um guards have to grab him because if they don't grab him he's gonna fall over the barrier so <laughs> <laughs> they're waiting like that's a guard in the lower right hand corner. That's a guy waiting to catch him. Oh, yeah. is it? Yeah. Wow. What a cool shot. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Are you looking forward to yeah. shooting concerts again? Are you gonna do that again? Uh, they canceled. They're done. They they finished before well, twenty eighteen, I think was the last Vans Warp Tour. So I won't get to do that again, but I'd love to shoot more concerts. Yeah, they're definitely they're definitely fun. Especially, especially with my Z9. <laughs> right? What is on that thing? Every time I see that thing, you've got something else bolted onto it. Like, <laughs> I, I don't think so. I think it's she's fully fluffed. She's ready to go to work. Um, it is like a Borg. Yeah, oh, you got your wireless thing on there too. <laughs> it's like a Borg. It's a yeah. Borg. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, it's that time. Favorites. What is your favorite? And you cannot pick food. you can't pick your own. I <sighs> let's see. I've got my favorite on the screen now. I want to see if, Do you? Uh yep. And we haven't discussed this in advance. So I've got it up on the screen. All I have to do is press the button to take that to take the screen share. So I'm we'll really see struggling. Troy... I'm really struggling. I really like I really like Karen's. That's 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 really one of my favorite. I really like Karen's. So um but show me what you what you picked. We'll go with whatever you pick. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Uh, wait, I don't have a. How come I don't have a drum roll sound effect? That is so. Oh, stop! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Instead of the drum roll, you get you guys get this. Okay. There you, there you go. <laughs> what is that little fairy twinkle? Oh, it's geez. called it's called a Glockenspiel. That's the name of it. Glockenspiel. Or I could use a party noise maker. Here we go. No, don't use any of them. <laughs> oh, jeez, did it. There it is. That one. I love this one. I don't know. It's oh, this, nice. Yeah. This is I the simplicity of Nora's shot. This is like I love. I love simple. This is very simple, and it draws you in, and it yeah. makes you think. It it instantly makes you think. Like, where? What is this? What's going on here? Is this patterns in it sand? Like is this an illustration? Like, what the heck is this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, no, because it's it. been a very, a very simple shot. Nora's walking down the street, and this was some water formations <laughs> next to a drain in the, in the, you know, in the floor or in the ground. I like it. Yeah. You can invert it; it become, it becomes a completely different thing. You invert it, it becomes roots, like a root structure, right? Right, so. right, yeah, yeah, it does. No, it's, it's a very cool image. Yeah, I definitely love this one too. I was really struggling between all of them. Um, so yeah. I'm glad you picked this time. <laughs> yep. I'm I'm putting my foot down. I like this one. I like the lot. Oh. <laughs> good. Very good. All right. Uh Nora Zanotnis, congratulations. You're 
you, you are the winner. I do that because I just like to see the look of disgust on Troy's face whenever these sound effects. Be like. You know, you know, playing those playing those sound effects is be like doing like spot coloring on wedding images. You know? Oh like, yeah, maybe. Or, or the double exposure in the mirror with the dress and the not the dress. Like the, no, no, those. Well, things you don't, don't do happen. that. I thought you did that anymore <laughs> ever. Isn't that no. your specialty? The the bride and groom portrait with the parents in the clouds looking down on them? Where's my where's my nuclear explosion <laughs> sound effect right now? I know. I know. Yeah, the uh the one sound effect I was looking for is that that game show wrong answer sound effect. It goes like bum 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 bum. So I'm gonna get that and look that, you know, something like that. I gotta load yeah. it up. All right. Well, cool. Congratulations, Nora Zanotnis. Uh, very, very cool shot. I love it. I love that shot a lot. I can't stop looking at it. Look at that. That is a beautiful shot. Very fun and simple. Yeah. And right yeah, on well top. Yep. Well, well done. done. Like I do. Like Nicole likes her steaks. Well done. I do not like my steaks. Well done. All right. Uh, and then next, coming up next week is, I'm scrolling in the feed here. Like we said, it is the path not taken. That is our next topic for the next photo critique, yes. the path yes. not taken. Any suggestions? Oh man, you know, that that's actually a really tough topic. Um, I, I don't know, you know, I'm trying to think about images that I have that I could, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Good, continue, please continue. <laughs> <laughs> you give me control man uh, come on i'm gonna use it i did not give it you took it it's not the same it's not you didn't earn it it's not like we voted you in you know you I just know. kind of like are there i just i just, I just marched in right and, and started like you like russia and ukraine right just go in without permission there you go um I, I think the path not taken could be so many things like like it could be very, very um, symbolic, like, you know, so, like for me, like I never graduated. I never got a degree. I never graduated from college. I don't have a bachelor's or anything like that. Right. So mm -hmm. that's a path like I could do a photograph, you know, of a university and all this kind of stuff and like make it symbolic of like, oh, this is a path that I didn't choose. Right. Um, it could, I could see city streets with, you know, doors. Um, you know, things like that. I, I, and I'm, and I'm reaching like right now, I just, I can't, I can't think of what, what else I would do, but I would look for those type of things. Yeah. My, the, the thing that I think of, like I was saying at the beginning, when I think path, not <laughs> now you're off, you're off. <laughs> when I, when I think path, not taken, I think, uh, I, my brain automatically goes to forks in the road. Like a fork, like someone sitting at a fork. And not that this, I'm not being prescriptive at all. I'm just going, what, what my brain goes to. And it goes to a fork in the road or even something simple like a tool that you don't use or something in the garage that hasn't been touched in a long time. And now it has cobwebs on it because it hasn't been taken. It's been a path that you've been deciding to use other things instead of that thing. So it could be, I mean, the sky's the limit for, for that sure. kind of discussion, I think. So. Sure, sure. Yeah. All right. Path yep, I agree. Yep. I look forward to seeing what the community creates. Yeah. Yep. Cool. All right. Well, that's it for critique number 100 and Troy, 185 critiques. You believe that? I know. I know. Right. This is this is year four, right? Like this is year four, I think. <sighs> is it? Jeez, we're getting old. We're getting just, just... <laughs> I got to stop counting. I want to stop counting these critiques. Maybe that's what <laughs> makes me feel bad. Well, you got to number them. Let's not number them. Um, this is what we yeah, do. We it have is to number them. <laughs> I know. I know. All right, folks. Well, thank you, everyone who submitted images for this critique. Uh, if you're watching this and you're not a TWIP member, you can become one by heading over to join.thisweekinphoto.com and join the community, hang out with us. If you join before next week, you can submit your image for The Path Not Taken. And we, we hold, Stephen Sharp says this is year five. Ah, thanks, Stephen. Appreciate that. <laughs> get old, get old. Just oh, lie to me. Just 
lied to us. We don't need the truth. But I got to end this. I got to go take my Geritol or something. So yeah, you do. Better. You got to go walk. Go do you your, go go walk. Take your walk. I, I do have to do, go do my walk. It's raining here, though. It is raining. We had, It was storming all night here. Steven, was, I'm sure oh, it was yeah. storming where you were, too, right? It was storming uh, all like hard rain. So we uh, we did the let's enjoy the rain thing, opened up the sliding glass door, turned on the fireplace and chilled, you know, listened to the rain falling with the fire on. It was so nice. So nice. Yeah. Little Jack, yeah. you know. Um, all right. Cool. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming on and hanging out with, with us in the stream. If you're watching this after the fact, thank you for watching the replay. Come join us at join.thisweekinphoto.com and we'll leave it right there. Please be sure to like and subscribe to this video to feed the algorithm. And yeah, yeah, exactly. That's Troy's please like and subscribe face right there. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again, Troy. Let's see it. There you go. <laughs> that's, that's the like and subscribe. All right, folks, always the highlight of it's the start to my week is doing these things. So thanks, everybody, for participating. Thanks for being a member of the community. And we will see you all next week for the Path Not Cheers, Taken. Cheers, guys. Good luck. Yeah.